Hello, I'm FGX Toycat, and welcome back to the top five video. And yes, I know this is a bit of an old school format, but there's something I've wanted to talk about for a really long time now, and I figured this would be a great way to do it because Minecraft is a game which is updated near constantly since its release over 10 years ago now, and pretty much every single one of those updates has changed a significant number of features, meaning that if you look at any single Minecraft feature, it's probably changed at least a few times. So there's been a great deal of buffs and a great deal of nerfs, and I figured why not talk about the biggest nerfs in today's video because so many features have been improved by Minecraft's updates, but so many many have been ruined as well, and uh, some of these were definitely necessary, such as water, which used to do this when placed by the way, but some of which don't feel like they were necessary, like the fifth example, which is going to have to be the golden apple. So the golden apple is actually one of Minecraft's oldest features, you might not know this, but it was added back in 2010, and it used to be the god item in Minecraft. It would heal your entire health point bar at a time where every food was instant to eat. It was basically the god heal, it could take you from having next to no health all the way up to max, and uh, yeah, it was fairly unbalanced to say the least, which is why eventually when they nerfed the hunger system in 1.8, they switched to the new system where eating actually took some time as opposed to being instant, and because of that they had a brand new hunger system and the gold apple had to be rebalanced, however it still ended up being top of the pack as far as uh, hunger items went, because it restored 10 separate hunger points or 5 hunger bars, and it also would uh, give you the regeneration effect for 30 seconds. So that made it a seriously powerful item and people still went for it, which is why they decided to nerf it again with the 1.1 update which is where they nerfed the amount of hunger it gave you, so it still gave you regeneration, but only for four seconds, and they also made it so it would only give you four, uh, you know, separate hunger points, or two hunger shanks, basically making it a really fast emergency food, but not too much else. And uh, yeah, it was also requiring only gold nuggets instead of eight gold blocks, so the basic idea was like, oh yeah, you can find these things in the world, or you can make them if you use, uh, you know, some gold nuggets, and also they're gonna be nerfed to respect the fact that you can probably get a few more of these at one time. This was the point where they really became a legitimate survival item as opposed to just a pipe dream, but then after it settles down as being a fairly usable item, you know, it was decided, okay, these things are being used too often, so they decided to change the recipe from using gold nuggets to using gold ingots instead. They increased the cost of the gold apple by nine times, and although they gave it a small buff to its actual use, the fact that it cost nine times more to make was pretty absurd, but people still use it to this day. Despite the fact that the gold apple has, you know, gone long from its very peak and way back in the day, it is still an amazing item to use, and that just goes to show that e if you have something that's really, really good, even if you nerf it seriously, people will still end up using it, and uh, as a fun little related fact, in case you think the Enchanted Golden Apple is the same item as the Gold Apple, because they are both apples that are gold, uh, the Enchanted Golden Apple was so good that even when it cost 8 blocks of gold, people were still making it, and because gold farms are a thing, Mojang just decided in the end to remove the Enchanted Golden Apple as a crafting recipe, something which has only just taken effect in Minecraft Bedrock, so fun fact. Before we move into the 4th biggest nerf of Minecraft history, because the fourth biggest nerf of all time, I would say, is to the sharpness enchantment. I really, really used to like sharpness as an enchantment, and I mean, it doesn't take a genius to work out why, right? Like, oh, so sharpness, what it used to do, is it used to give you plus 1.25 damage for every level you had, and it went up to sharpness 4. It used to have to be that you had to combine some enchantments to get sharpness 5, now it's a lot easier, but still, there was a way to get sharpness 5, which would give you 6.25 extra damage, or to simplify things, Things, that's three extra hearts of damage, which could take your diamond sword from doing seven damage to doing ten point like one two five. It was an amazing uh, you know effect that could just b boost your sword, make it extra amazing. And don't get me wrong, I understand why they nerfed it, but the nerf they made to it was just so depressing because now the first level of sharpness gives you an extra damage point, and that's really nice. It's basically the same. Sharpness one is still very similar to how it used to be in terms of damage, but every extra level of sharpness gives you point five extra, which means that sharpness five instead of giving you six attack damage extra gives you free attack damage extra. That's right, the go-to sword enchantment, the one you probably still go to to this day because you might not have known about this, uh, was significantly nerfed, and although this isn't true in Bedrock, so that's kind of nice to know, uh, sharpness on Java and on consoles is just super weak to where it used to be, and the interesting thing about this is it means that if you're playing survival Minecraft, uh, you actually should be using smite more than you use sharpness, because sharpness doesn't actually, you know, in terms of like attacking uh, most mobs in Minecraft, sharpness doesn't help you too much, whereas Smite can allow you to one hit if you get a critical on any undead mob because Smite is significantly more powerful to make up for the fact that it only works on undead mobs. Uh, it's also the best enchantment for fighting the Wither and just yeah, in survival, sharpness, uh, you know, sharpness is still useful for PvP because any edge in combat is better than no edge in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, the fact that it's basically just a PvP enchantment for getting that tiny little edge uh, that is a fraction of what it used to be and that really isn't that useful in survival, it's kind of sad in my opinion. And I guess, you know, this is my advertisement go play, but 
bedrock because you can still use mega sharpness on even regular survival. I think that's cool at least. Anyway, let's move into the third biggest nerf of Minecraft history. How can we have a nerf bigger than one that makes your diamond sword half as effective in terms of its enchantment? Well, let's talk about some combat equipment that is a third of the effectiveness that it used to be at its full strength back in the good old Minecraft beta days. Again, I try not to be the guys like, oh, everything used to be better in the past because I think progress generally makes things better and, uh, you know, most things do get better over time, but every now and then there's a casualty of that war and one of the casualties in the case of, uh, you know, combat has to be the armor. So this is a change that was made way back when, but if you played Minecraft Xbox 360 back in the day, back when I first started, in case you're curious, uh, or if you played Minecraft before beta 1.6, you might note that the way that the combat worked is that your armor would give you 100% protection and then as your armor went down, that protection would go down too. And obviously, the benefit of having iron or diamond or gold or chainmail armor would be the fact that it would last longer than the other types of armor because, you know, when you got hit, it would use less of the durability in the same way a diamond tool lasts longer than a, you know, a, an iron tool. Uh, diamond armor lasts longer than an iron armor and every single hit reduces it by less. This meant that back in the day, every single piece of armor was equivalent until it got damaged. Your first hit from any piece of armor, you know, every piece of armor was the same for the first hit because it wasn't damaged until you took that first hit and this meant that leather armor was as good as diamond, which again, sounds insane. The actual practicalities was that a leather armor would have to be switched out a bunch, but think about the PvP implications if this was true to this day. Instead of having to, in a UHG, spending 10 minutes going below ground, making a full set of fine armor, you would just make leather armor by killing some cows as fast as you could, and you could, for your first combat engagement, and then it would decrease off that, have 100% protectiveness. The amount of fun, skill, and strategies and stuff like that that could go into it would be amazing, but because they decided to reform the armor system to make it so that, you know, diamond armor was always better than leather rather than sometimes, leather armor is now a shell of what it want, used, once used to be. A full set of leather armor only gives you seven armor points as opposed to 20 with diamond, which means that it's now 35% as effective as it used to be. This is before the fact that we even consider that they nerfed all armor as a whole, uh, you know, in the 1.9 combat update. But again, we're not going to dive into that one right now. We'll just say the armor was already pretty badly nerfed and then it got nerfed again. And now, yeah, leather armor, I mean, it's still better than not having it, but it's not by a lot compared to where it used to be the amazing thing. So yeah, with that said, with that all done and out of the way, should we move into the second biggest nerf? You know what? That's a rhetorical question. I'm just talking to myself on the internet here. Of course, we're going to move into the second one. This isn't a top three video after all. That's not a popular clickbait format. So what we are going to talk about now is water in Minecraft, because what are you doing if you don't know how water used to be in the game? You know, that's terrible. I'm sorry. So anyway, here's the thing about water. Water has been nerfed quite a few times over Minecraft's history, because honestly, you know, having water fluids in a game, it's a hard task for any programmer. But the interesting thing about water is it used to create source blocks when expanded. If your water flows somewhere, uh, every single block that it flew, uh, flowed onto, it would create a source block there, and that source block could do the exact same thing, which means that if you filled a cave, if you poured some water into a cave, the whole cave would be filled with water. The uh, implications of this, the fact that if you had a giant like body of water, you could fill the entire thing up with one bucket was amazing, and it meant that water was so, so powerful. And again, I feel like the combat implications uh, <laughs> would be pretty and crazy too. Uh, but water used to be super powerful, and then it got nerfed. There's that nerf where it went from being, uh, you know, it went from making source blocks basically infinitely, uh, where you could flood the whole world by flooding one mountain, uh, to the world where we are right now. We're like, oh yeah, so the way water works is you place a bucket and then you've got to place more if you want to make more source blocks. There is a way to make sources, but it requires some actual maneuvering, which it didn't used to require. But then also they nerfed it way back when to require you to jump into two blocks of water instead of one to save your life. And although they later reversed that change, if you don't know, now you can fall into any amount of water and you won't die. At one point, water got nerfed so hard from being this amazing tool that you had to use very carefully, but when you used it, it could fill everything to being like, oh yeah, water is this tool that is almost impossible to actually do what you want to with. If you want to fill out an entire ocean, good luck with that one. Even in creative, unless you're using the slash fill command, it can be really challenging to fill up a body of water because again, we had to nerf it because being able to flood the whole world in one bucket is probably a bit of a concern given that it'd be really tricky to unfill the world. But anyway, with that said, let's move into the biggest nerf of all Minecraft history. You know where this one's going already. We could just end the video and you'd be like, you know what? I knew what number one was, but it is every single weapon in Minecraft 
Minecraft with the combat cooldown as of Minecraft 1.9. So if you don't know, 1.9 was the combat update. There were so many things to be hyped for. This was an update that took over a year and a half to make because again, uh, well, I mean, there were big issues with Mojang also, but they decided to spend a lot of time prototyping, thinking out and like trying to work out a cool theme for a Minecraft update. So they went for the combat update. They reformed the entire arrow system. There are so many different arrows now. They made brand new potions and brand new potion types to go alongside that. Uh, they even extended the end. Everything got bigger in this update. Anything that could, could be conceivably linked to combat got changed or altered in this update. And doing all of that by itself might have been a revolutionary change to Minecraft, but they did one mistake, one mistake, which has doomed a lot of the Minecraft Java community to this day. All the way back in 2015, a decision that they made has hurt the Minecraft community even in 2019, and that was this combat weapon cooldown thing. So if you've never played Minecraft Java, again, this is just standard now as of 1.9 forwards. Uh, basically, when you hit, there is a delay until you can hit again uh, at full strength. You can obviously still spam hit if you want to knock an enemy back, but if you hit before your cooldown has reverted, you'll do less damage. The amount of damage you'll do is significantly reduced, and this means if you want to do the full damage, you've got to wait for the combat cooldown every single time, which means if you want to kill a zombie, instead of three hits just in quick succession, you have to be like, hit, hit, hit. And although there's a combat indicator, which they added later because of this outrage, the truth is people do not like this combat cooldown system. I like it because, I, you know, the reason it was implemented and the reason I like it is because it was designed to bring balance to the combat system, make it not about who has the better connection and that's everything. Instead, it's who can actually do this timing. But it's a mechanic that was designed to add skill that people didn't want to learn and that people didn't enjoy learning. And that's why they probably should have reversed it. Like, okay, having shields is cool, but is it worth, uh, you know, having dual uh, hands is really cool. But is it worth losing all of our, you know, like the combat skills that have been developed? A lot of people who play, you know, Java servers, which is where a lot of the Minecraft community was, said no. Any server that had a PvP-based game mode had to decide, like, upset the entire PvP fan base, uh, you know, or we can, uh, you know, just move back, we can lose the new features. It's an easier thing to go with. So pretty much every major server, you can still play in Minecraft 1.8. And for a bunch of Minecraft players, uh, you know, the number's going down because that's just a sad thing. For a bunch of Minecraft players, you know, 1.8 was the last Minecraft update they care about. Minecraft mod makers, a lot of those still only make Minecraft 1.8. A huge portion of the Minecraft Java community uh, is stored in 1.8, and this is arguably one of the worst decisions Minecraft Java has ever made. Again, whether you agree with the fact that combat cooldown is a good decision or not, you know, I think it is, but a lot of people disagree, and I think that's fine. That's, uh, you know, a thing we can do on the internet without setting each other on fire. But here's the crazy thing, uh, you know, the decision to do this split the Java community so badly that I think that's one of the reasons its growth significantly slowed. If you look at Minecraft sales by version of the game, you'll see how Minecraft console edition has sold significantly more copies than Java edition at this point, you know, despite the fact that it doesn't even exist anymore, basically. And there's also the fact that Minecraft Bedrock has sold more copies than both combined. While Minecraft Java was busy splitting its community, Minecraft Bedrock was growing one which was, you know, com uh, is colliding across all the platforms. And uh, it's really an interesting thing to see from the outsider's perspective, how like one bad mistake can really not destroy a game. A lot of people love Minecraft Java, still play Minecraft Java, but can really divide a community to the stage where is there really a Minecraft Java community? It depends on what you mean by the word community. Like, oh yeah, there are people who play the game in all sorts of versions, but is there one overarching giant server community like there used to be? And the answer is sadly, no, no, there's not. And uh, this is one of the things that Minecraft Bedrock is always trying to like work with. There's a reason there hasn't been a combat change and there's a reason the combat update V2 has been under works for years now. They want to make Minecraft combat better, but they're going to make sure they do it in a way that doesn't offend the entire 100 million plus strong Minecraft Bedrock player base. And that's why whenever we talk about combat update, you might say, why don't they just do it, get it done with? It's just changing a few numbers here and there or adding a new weapon or adding a new whatever. Uh, but the truth is, uh, if you get the combat wrong in a game like Minecraft, where combat isn't the focus, but it's a key part of the game, especially for multiplayer, you're going to hurt the community. And that is why the biggest nerf of Minecraft history is one that literally tore the game asunder. And yeah, maybe you know a little bit about that now. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're just listening to this video as some background noise because, you know, you, you feel a bit lonely or you're playing Minecraft and you want to, you know, have something in the audio. And if that's the case, then may I implore you to watch another video of mine because this is the end of this video and that means you've got to choose another video. And if you choose one of mine, there's a tiny chance that you see an ad before the video or choose to become a member after it. And that would be really cool for me and give me an ego boost and make me feel important. But if you choose not to do that, I appreciate that too. Thank you very much for watching this video because I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.